welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy and I'm the public defender of the 19th Judicial Circuit. And we are going to be talking, well, I always, you know, the programs, at least to me, I hope to the <laughs> viewers, are so exciting and there's so much great stuff going on. So there's another exciting initiative that um, is kind of piggybacking. Um, what we're going to talk about today is kind of piggybacks on um, what we talked about the, on the last show, which is our gang problem, which we have um, in St. Lucie County. But anyway, um, we have a great show, and it, Linda Soto, welcome. Thank you. And you are with the Boys and Girls Club, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, and you are kind of um, targeting... Um, well, first of all, give, give me your title with okay. the Boys and Girls Club. I, I've been working with the Boys and Girls Club for the past nine years. Okay. Um, and I am a chief, a chief truancy officer. Okay. Um, so I oversee our truancy program. Um, we serve eight schools within the county, elementary. Right. Um, kindergarten through fifth grade is our target, um, our target age, um, or target age group. Right. Um, and... We are funded through Children's Service Council, and we have a partnership with St. Lucie County School Board. Right. In addition to that, I also oversee our gang prevention through Targeted Outreach Program, um, kind of renamed the I Can Initiative, which stands for Every Youth Engaged Choosing to Avoid Negativity. Oh, I know okay. it's a mouthful, yeah, but, <laughs> it is. but it's very positive. <laughs> and um, I've been overseeing that for the past year and a half. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's go. Let, let's step back a little bit. You've been, what did you do before you got involved nine years ago with Boys and Girls Club? Well, I'm originally from New York. Okay. And um, while in New York, I worked for Child Protective Services. Oh, okay. Which I did for 15 years. Oh, boy. Yes. That, that had to be tough. So yes. you are very experienced. Yes. Okay. And, we, you know, the focus today is, is the gang prevention. But um, let's. Let's start with the truancy. I, I know to you and I and people in the system, um, tr the word truancy, um, it, we know what it means and uh, all about it. But kind of define truancy and kind of define, if you will, the problem in our school system and is it getting worse, better? You know, talk to me a second. Okay. Well, um Truancy is students who have five or more unexcused absences. Okay. Um, and I emphasize the word unexcused because it's that they are missing school without an, a reason. Right. Um, no parent no, is calling in. There's no note the next day. Okay. Correct. Right. Correct. Um, and unfortunate, and the reason we target elementary is because at that level, it's really the parent's onus. You right. know, it's the parent's responsibility to enforce and instill that positive, um, that education is of importance. Um, so really getting that at the younger ages um, so that when the children become of an age where they're making their own decisions, right. um, it's, it's on a positive note. And we all know how, how valuable and how important schooling is, right. um, especially right. for our futures. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so what, what we do within truancy is we receive a printout of um, students that have five or more unexcused absences. Is this throughout the whole St. Lucie County School District? Well, no. We um, we target the Boys and Girls Club targets right. eight uh, local elementary schools. Well, who targets the others? Um, Children's Home Society oh, has uh, okay. six or seven schools, I believe, um, and their their program is very similar to ours. And you, so um, you kind of split it up. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And so then, go ahead. I did. And, I did not realize. And then that. the okay. other schools um, that are not in either of our programs, um, the school social workers. Um, oversee the, the truancy. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, it is it is a big problem. Right. Um, not just within St. Lucie County, but throughout the states. Right. Um, I believe it's 10% of of the student population that you know have um, truant that have um, excessive wow. absences. Wow. That's um, a lot. Yes. It's so, more than I would have thought. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I do feel that we make an impact. Um, in, in what we do, um, you know, to, to enforce and instill 
the importance of, of academics. Right. And, and so you get the printout, and then what do you do with the printout? Okay, so we reach out to the parents, just making them aware of the policy, the state law. Now let, let's let's back up. Okay, okay, so it is a state. It is a state law. It's not the St. Lucie County School District that you you cannot be have more than five unexcused absences without what? Well, it's the state law that every every child from the age of six to eighteen okay should be in school. Needs right. to be in school, okay. so that is the law. Okay. Um, as each school, each county has their own policy. Okay, that's um, what so I. So within St. Lucie County, um, the, the school red, policy. The red flag goes up after five unexcused Correct. absences, and then they turn it over to you or um, Children's Home Society. Correct. Okay. And and so we then follow up and make contact with the parent. Right. Just making sure making sure that they're aware of the policy, that there is that need to turn in a note in order for the absent to be excused. Right. Okay. Um, and of course it has to be a legitimate excuse. Right. <laughs> it right. can't be, oh, you know, I overslept or, you know, um, maybe once, twice you can get away with that. But well, you know, in overall there's there's standard within the policy. Okay, um, so when you say you make contact, I, and I'm sorry we're getting off on this, but yeah. you know I don't think I've ever really talked about this on a show or any, and this is important. So you make contact by phone. You're it, it could either be by phone or in person, home visit in right. person. Um, it all depends. If it's an initial call, I mean, if it's an initial contact, right? Usually it's by phone. Okay. Um, if we see we're getting printouts twice a month. So if we see that those absences are continuing even after we've made contact, we'll right. follow up with a home visit. Right. And if it gets too, um, too extreme, we do have um, uh, PST meetings, which are uh, problem-solving um, team meetings that we hold at the schools. Okay. Um, and the teacher, the parent, administrative staff at the school, myself or whoever the case manager is, um, will be present at that meeting. Okay. Find out what is the problem, why is this child continually missing school. Right, um, okay. Some par sometimes parents don't realize the resources that are out there. Right. Um, so, you know, so we do that network piece. If those absences continue thereafter, we do have truancy court. Right. Um, so, you know. And we, tell, we, tell me about that. Okay. So, um, truancy court um, is overseen by the magistrate. Right. Um, and when absences are excessive, if they have five or more right. unexcused absences when it, within a 30 day calendar period, mm -hmm. um, that makes them eligible for truancy court. Right. Of course, we put all the, you know, ducks in a line and try to get them the resources, the family, the resources that are needed before doing so. Right. It's not our intention to bring these matters to court. And you folks would turn them over, so to speak, to truancy court or turn them in mm -hmm. or follow Well, report? we actually file a petition. Okay. Um, in truancy court. Um, through the superintendent. It's through the school district. Okay. Um, but we represent the school district at the court appearance. And the and the parent is mandated to appear yes. with the child, without the child? Um, it depends. A lot of times um, the child, it's usually at 8.30 in the morning, so we hope that the child's at school. Right. Um, but there are some parents who do bring their, their um, child to court because maybe they have a later start date. Right, right. You know, a start time um, for school. So um, while at court, several things can happen. Um, either the, we see that the attendance significantly improves or the absences continue and at that time orders are, are in place. Um, and we've had pretty um, severe orders that, such as um, mandating the parent to uh, do so many hours of community service for Can they um, go to jail for absence. this? Um, they can. They can, absolutely, okay. because it is the law. Right, You know, right. The, the, the child does have to. Um, that is of extreme. Um, I think we've had one case in the years that I've been with um, wow. this program uh, that has actually had to go to do weekend um, serve time on the weekends. But. <laughs> You know, all these questions are going on, in my, but but usually, let, oh gosh, okay, let's back up. Do you do you normally, before it gets to truancy court, 
Have you seen, Linda, that once you kind of intervene, so to speak, that it, you once they see somebody's watching, somebody's looking, it does improve, and it, that it usually nips it in the bud? Or do people that, parents that aren't responsible in that way, do they usually continue until you hold their feet to the fire and, you, and the sanctions are terrible? The majority of the time, we see that significant improvement. Okay. No parent wants to be. It's every single month. They have to be present in court until the matter is um, dismissed. Oh, and, and, okay. And, and, and a case will not likely be dismissed unless they've had two months of no unexcused absences. Right. And so that doesn't mean if the child gets that, sick and they write a note right. or whatever, call. Okay. Right, of course. These are just unexcused absences. Okay, now, and what is the rule, if you will, uh, as far as if the child isn't going to show up? Are, is the rule that they have to call that morning or they have to call that morning or bring in a note the next day? What is, mm -hmm. what is that rule? When a child misses school, right. they have three days to submit some sort of documentation, okay. Okay. whether it's a medical documentation that they were sick and they went to the doctor, or, you know, sometimes your child's sick and you don't really you need forget. to take yeah. them to the doctor. Right. So you can handwrite a note. Um, it doesn't have to be great detail, but just specifics. You yeah, know, the this date is what... that they missed, of course, the child's name and the reason why they missed. Okay. Um, and they have up to three days to turn in turn in the notes. Okay. Um, so there's really no excuse um, unless the child is truly being kept home for, for no apparent reason. For, oh, I'm tired, or, you know, we went to bed late, or, you know, right. that's unexcusable because yeah. what, are, what example are we setting for our children right. if we allow that to happen? Absolutely. I mean, I have two children of my own, and they know <laughs> you better be on your deathbed because right, if, you're if not, not going to school. Right, right. <laughs> you're going to school, you know, and that's what we need parents to do more. Well, now, Linda, here, here's the next obvious question. How of that 10 percent, how what percentage of children it, the parent thinks they got to school and then they because you're talking K through A. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, by seventh, eighth grade, they can be conniving on their own. How many of these kids, the parent didn't know they weren't in school? Right. What percentage? And, and it's it's actually, and if I if I miss uh, misspoke, it's kindergarten through fifth grade. Oh, okay, fifth grade. So well, that's fifth grade. Yes, and and we do have situations where um, you know the child walks to school and the parent said, oh well, I thought they were in school, or um, the child is actually at school but is involved in a, the um, breakfast club at school and my, may dawdle to get to the classroom. Okay. And okay. that's where the importance of the team meeting comes into play. Okay. Um, find out what what is the problem? Why why is this child missing school? Right. You know, right. are they actually at school and just you know taking their time getting into the classroom? Right. You know, so and and when we find those things out, then we take whatever appropriate actions as a team to assure that the child is getting into the classroom on a regular basis, you right. know, on a timely manner. Um, because it is disruptive. It's it's not just a child missing school. It's also tardies. And right. and I, I know that's not w why I'm here today more no, so. No, I know, but, but you know, this but is very, I, I did the, not real that, mm -hmm. realize how much intervention and help there was. Of course, I always say that, you mm -hmm. know, I, if if everybody in the ca county and the circuit knew how much help, it, nobody'd have a problem right, right, <laughs> because right. there's so much out there to, to, you know, if you need it, you Absolutely. know, and you it, you know where to go. But mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know where mm -hmm. to go. But um, so there's also the tardy issue, right? Right. So if the, a student has five unexcused tardies, where either they're arriving to school late yeah. or getting picked up early from school. It turns into an unexcused absence. Good. So that yeah, adds good. to good. And the reason why I believe this policy was put in place is because it's such a disruption. You know, the parents will, may say, oh, well, they were only five minutes late or it was just within two minutes oh, or whatever. No. But once that teacher gets started, 
it's such a disruption within to the class the students missing so much academic time right you know right. Uh, and to regather the group once once someone walks into the classroom you know it's it's not fair to the teachers it's not fair to the other students right right you know so um, yeah so that's Truancy in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I, like I say, I, you know, gosh, we've been doing the show forever. And that, you know, I, I don't know if we've ever, we, we need to have you back and talk more in detail on that. Because that, that's important. But thank goodness that um, I think the message we need to send to the people who are watching is that there, there is intervention available. There is help to to you know maybe it's just time management huh Absolutely. for for these people to to get their kids in school on time or not pick them up early or get them there in the first place so that that's the good news Absolutely. okay so <laughs> back to the focus which is the gang initiative yeah. you last um, month we had a show regarding um, the gang problem and it's restoring the village which was which was way cool mm -hmm. and I guess you're working with them on this gang in initiative to to help quell the problem so tell tell us what what you and Boys and Girls Club are doing okay well Boys and Girls Club um, receives funding through uh, State Alliance, Florida State Alliance. Okay. Um, and what is that? Now that's a new one. It's a Florida Alliance. It's, yeah. it's through the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, okay. Um, and so we we receive funding to um, to have a gang prevention program. Okay. Uh, we target youth who are ages 10 to 15. Okay. Um, it is a prevention program, so it's different from the Restoring the Village Youth Initiative right. because right. they're more of an intervention yeah. program. Right. Um, so the student that the, the the youth that we work with are ages 10 to 15 who are exhibiting or or ex expressing acting out or acting out behaviors that may lead to gang gang yeah but the, the or gang coupled activity. with you know both the initiatives it's it's A perfect absolutely. you're do you know they're intervening when it's gone too far exactly and hopefully they're going to stop it but if you if we work on the prevention to begin with because We've got signs going on that. That's great. So go ahead. Right, I'm sorry. right, right. No, that's fine. And we do work closely together. Um, in fact, I just met with the um, outreach workers um, through the Restoring the Village um, Youth Initiative right. last week, um, and and we will be working closely. You know, um, the youth that we uh, work with will be involved with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we, we try to bring them in as club members. Um, okay, so they're it, not ones that are already the, part of, or sometimes they there are? There are some. Okay. Um, the majority of the youth are active Boys and Girls Club members. Okay. But we are also reaching out to the community. Okay. Um, we want those youth who are just, as you could drive, you know, throughout yeah. the county yeah. and just see kids kind of hanging out. And we know hang out means trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. or can lead to trouble. Right. Um, so just trying to connect them with positive it doesn't necessarily have to be within the boys and girls club it we can you know find other resources connect them with uh, you know uh, extracurricular activities what we try to do is find out what their area of need is what what their likes and and dislikes are and right. try to connect them to the appropriate resources right and once they are within the boys and girls clubs we have so much that we do, um, character and leadership development, um, education and career development, healthy and lifestyles. These are all programs, sports, recreation, right. arts. That's all what we do within the Boys and Girls Club. You know, some people may look at it, oh, it's just another aftercare program or, or you know, that sort of stuff. No, it's it is so much more. truly amazing. I'm not in the clubs as much as I would like to be right because right. of my roles but I do make a presence at all of them um, and so it's it's so important um, you know our staff is amazing you know they're such great role models we have a, um, a garden terrace unit just they have a, a music maker club 
They, yeah. they develop their own song. They produce the, their own song. In fact, they just performed at um, the uh, teen uh, round executive roundtable. Just had oh. a teen summit or a teen right, fair, right. county fair, fair or something like that. And they came in second place. Oh my gosh! And in fact, next week they'll be performing for the. Um, Treasure Coast Got Talent. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, that's so, great! Yeah, and so you know, a lot of our club members they haven't even had the opportunity prior to becoming involved with the Boys and Girls Club, have never left their own community. Yeah. And we've had club members who have gone to California and you know uh, Daytona, various areas to go to teen summits. We have Youth of the Year. I mean, we just offer so much. Um, but getting back to the gang prevention right, program, right. Um, it, it's so important to give the youth in our county the opportunity to have better, yeah. to do better, yeah. Yeah. you know? Well, it, <laughs> let's step back a, a minute. So these, the kids that are in your, that are going to your clubs, mm -hmm. Um, and you mentioned something about you, you know the uh, career paths and, and that. Do you actually have? Because this is something I I'm not aware of. You actually have speakers come in for you know. You said well, some people just think it's an aftercare program. Mm -hmm. You actually have speakers come in during those time periods to talk about these things. Are they a lecture? Are they one on one? Can they be both? What? Um, we always welcome. Um, right, you know, uh, community resources to come in and share with our with our right. youth. Right, right. Um, we have. I, I don't know if you're familiar with um, sword out swords of outreach outreach of swords men of swords. No, I'm, no. I'm forgot. I forget the name of the the group, but they come in. There, it's a group of mentors. Um, they work with our teens. Um, Dr. Scheel, I know, has come in and, and right. did, you know, uh, came in and spoke with the kids. So it's engaging right. as well as maybe lecturing. Okay. So, you know, of course we don't want the kids. They've just been in school all day, so we don't want them to have to sit through a right. whole, you right. know. So we try to make it as, as interactive as possible. And again, um, you know, maybe next time I'll have a, a, a club member, a right. staff. Come right. with me so that they can share and elaborate right. no, no, a little no, bit no. more I was on just, the program. But but with this gang initiative, you you <laughs> have boys and girls that that um, you see may have the proclivity to get involved in gangs. So what? How exactly do you target them to prevent that? Okay. Well, right now we are um, just focusing on the. Lincoln Park community area. Oh, okay. That's where our uh, that's where the Restoring the Village Youth Initiative right, is targeting right, as well. Right. Um, and we have two clubhouses that are located right within that that area. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. Wow. we have the Garden Terrace unit, which is right. on um, Avenue J and Thirty First. Right. And we also have our Infinity um, unit, which is on Twenty Third and I. Wow. Okay. So. Um, Right now, we are just focusing on those two clubhouses. Um, and if I may just step back a little bit, our program is just starting out. Right. So we only have a, a, a small group that we're working with. Okay, so how, how many boys and girls? The target is 38 youth. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and it's those who are acting out behavior-wise, struggling academically. Um, you know, we'll, we try to engage everybody. When, when we have a youth involved, we sit down, we do an action plan with them. Okay. With the youth present. But then, you don't have, right, but, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but you don't have to do that, and you don't do that with all the kids that are involved with Boys and Girls Club. This is just something you've started if they, you feel that the gang issue may be a problem. Correct. correct. Okay, correct. go ahead. I mean, we all, uh, you know, all of the youth who are in the Boys and Girls Club receive that mentoring. Right. But th these are the youth who we know that if we don't put more emphasis on them, right. we're right. going to lose them. Yeah. They're going to lose interest in attending the Boys and Girls Club or 
participating in extracurricular ex school activities. You know, so it's it's those I've seen so many youth in the nine years that I've worked for the Boys and Girls Club come and go. Yeah. You know, and and you 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 cringe at unfortunately. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and and it's not a lot, but there are there are a few. So if yeah. we this program is really brought into put more emphasis on those youth okay who may have family members who are actively involved in gangs or right. relatives right. or friends that they're associating with and we're aware of that just kind of reassuring and reiterating to them that this is not the path that you need to take there are other options right you right. know and um, you know that's truly our our focus with that so we we engage not only the youth we also um, in fact I just met with uh, the St. Lucie County School Board to um, be able to have access to speak with the teachers okay so that you the, get a better we, sense we yeah. have a better sense but also the youth sees that it's not just the Boys and Girls Club who cares, it's the community who cares. Right, right. We're here fighting for you. We're here trying to um, provide you the best opportunities that are out there. Right. Um, and, and so not only the, the youth, the school, but also the parents. You right. know, it's so hard to engage the parents. Um, you do have parents who are absolutely you know I want my child in this program I think it's a yeah. great program and then, I know what the, is out there on the streets right. I don't want that for my child so those are the nice easy cases yeah, yeah. you know but then, you the but then you exactly who, right who are and and no fault of theirs you right. know but they may they're reluctant you know yeah. do I really want my child in this yeah and, you know what's gonna happen you know right. are they going to be seen differently you know, within the community, so it's just... Oh, I see, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just kind of reiterate, we're here. And, and right. then I think that's why it's so key that we partner and we're so working so, so closely together with the Restoring the Village right. Youth Initiative. Right. Because I think if the community sees, we're not going away. We see this as yeah. a problem just right. as much as you right. see it as a problem and we want to help. Yeah. You know, hopefully that's going to make the impact that that is needed. Oh, God. No, and, and it will. It will. I mean, mm -hmm. I think um, between what you folks are doing and Restore, I mean, it, it's going to yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, it absolutely is. Well, we are, we got about a minute left. Okay. Um, believe it or not, it always <laughs> goes so fast. Sure it, did. Um, you want to wrap up and it is, are, do you need volunteers? Is there a way people can help? Well, one of the things that there's always a, 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 a need for help. Sure. Um, but getting the word just, out, right? Well, and, and just don't stand by and be a bystander. Right. Um, we really need to be our own voice. I'm huge right. on that. You right. know, it's, it's if you're not your own voice or if you don't stand up for something that you believe in, nobody's going to stand up. Right. for you. So make a referral so, if yes, you know. Yes, make a referral. If you have a youth, um, for my program it's ages 10 to 15, um, those who have not been in any trouble or uh, have a record or anything like that, right. those who are showing negative behaviors, right. um, uh, you know, just, just, just call. Just Call Boys and Girls Club, um, number 772-460-9918. Um, uh, okay, and, no, that's great, yes, Linda. That's yes. great. And thank you so very Absolutely. much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye.